Eighth grade, unit four, lesson 12, systems of equations. If you haven't subscribed, now's a good time to subscribe. And while you're down there, please hit that like button. I appreciate it, thanks. Problem number one. Here is the graph for one equation in a system of equations. A, write a second equation for the system so it has infinitely many solutions. In order for a line to have infinitely many solutions with another line or equations, both have to have the same slope and the same y-intercept. For this line, the y-intercept is 4 and the slope is negative 3 fourths. So we could write the equation y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 4. B. Write a second equation whose graph goes through ordered pair 0, 1, so the system has no solutions. In order to have both equations share no solutions, they both have the same slope and different y-intercept. I drew in this red line because this red line has the same slope, but a different y-intercept. The equation for this line would read y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 1. This equation has the same slope, but a different y-intercept. C. Write a second equation whose graph goes through ordered pair 0, 2, so the system has one solution at ordered pair 4, 1. This red line intercepts y at 2. The slope for the red line is negative 1 fourth. So the equation for the red line is y equals negative one-fourth x plus two. Number two, create a second equation so the system has no solutions. In order for two lines not to share any solutions, both lines should never intersect. Therefore, they should have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So the new equation is y equals three-fourths x minus 1. It has the same slope, but a different y-intercept. You can write the equation as y equals 3 fourths x plus 1 if you want, as long as the y-intercept is different. What needs to be the same is the slope. So y equals 3 fourths x has to be the same. It's the y-intercept, or in this case, the last term that needs to be different than the original one. Number 3. Andre is in charge of cooking broccoli and zucchini for a large group. He has to spend all $17 he has and carry 10 pounds of veggies. Zucchini costs $1.50 per pound and broccoli costs $2 per pound. One graph shows combinations of zucchini and broccoli that weigh 10 pounds and the other shows combinations of zucchini and broccoli that costs $17. The black line graph shows the 10 pound combination of zucchini and broccoli and the bluish line graph shows the combination of $17 worth of zucchini and broccoli. A. Name one combination of veggies that weighs 10 pounds but does not cost $17. This sounds harder than it looks. Really, we're just looking for a point on the black graph that's not on the blue graph because the black graph represents a combination of 10 pounds of zucchini and broccoli, and the blue graph represents $17 worth of zucchini and broccoli. I'll select the point that represents 5 pounds of zucchini and 5 pounds of broccoli. That's close to the blue line, but not on the blue line. B. Name one combination of veggies that costs $17, but does not weigh 10 pounds. Now we need to find a point on the blue line that's not on the black line. I think I'll go with 10 pounds of zucchini and one pound of broccoli. That point falls on the blue line, but not on the black line. C. How many pounds each of zucchini and broccoli can Andre get so that he spends all $17 and gets 10 pounds of veggies? This is going to be the point where the two lines intersect. So the only point I can select is six pounds of zucchini and four pounds of broccoli. Number four, the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, F, is related to the temperature in degrees Celsius, C, by the equation 
F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. A. In the Sahara Desert, temperatures often reach 50 degrees Celsius. How many degrees Fahrenheit is this? The temperature mentioned in that desert is 50 degrees Celsius, so I need to substitute the C with the value of 50. Now the equation reads F equals 9 fifths times 50 plus 32. In this case, we can cross cancel. 5 goes into 50 10 times and 5 goes into 5 once. Now the equation reads F equals 9 over 1 times 10 over 1 plus 32. And that's the same as F equals 9 times 10 plus 32. So F equals 9 times 10, which is 90, plus 32. So the degrees in Fahrenheit equals 90 plus 32, which is 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So when the desert is 50 degrees Celsius, it's also 122 degrees Fahrenheit. B. In parts of Alaska, the temperature can reach negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit. How many degrees Celsius is this? Since the temperature in Fahrenheit is negative 60 degrees, we need to substitute the F with a negative 60. Now the equation reads negative 60 equals 9 fifths C plus 32. Let's take away 32 from both sides of this equation. 32 minus 32 cancels each other out. And negative 60 plus a negative 32 equals negative 92. Now the equation reads negative 92 equals 9 fifths C plus 0. Or negative 92 equals 9 fifths C. To get the C by itself and make it just 1 C, we need to multiply by the reciprocal of 9 fifths. So we're going to multiply both sides by 5 ninths. That leaves us with just 1 C all by itself on the right side of the equal sign and negative 92 times 5 ninths on the left side of the equal sign. That becomes 460 over 9 equals 1 C, which is equal to 51 and 1 ninth. So in this case, negative 60 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 51 and 1 ninth degrees Celsius. C. There is one temperature where the degrees Fahrenheit and degrees Celsius are the same, so that C equals F. Use the expression from the equation where F is expressed in terms of C to solve for this temperature. Look in the middle of this paragraph. In the middle of the paragraph, it says that C equals F. So in this case, C can equal F. Now focus your attention on the two equations in the lower left side of the screen. I have F equals 9 fifths C plus 32. But then since C equals F, I can substitute that F with the C. So let's look at the bottom equation. It says C equals 9 fifths C plus 32. Now the situation in the paragraph says that C equals F. Since C equals F, these two equations are virtually the same. When we solve for C in this bottom equation, we're also solving for F. Here we go. Let's collect like terms. The C on the left is 1C, which is equivalent to 5 over 5C, or 5 fifths C. Now we can collect those like terms. Let's subtract 9 fifths from both sides. Now on the left side, we're left with negative 4 fifths C, and on the right side, we have 32. To make this a positive 1c, we'll have to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 4 fifths. So let's multiply both sides by negative 5 fourths. I've discovered that c equals negative 40. But remember, in this case, c equals f. So f also equals negative 40. Negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 40 degrees Celsius are equal temperatures. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks. I appreciate it.